Good morning to all. Happy to be here with you all in this really beautiful and special occasion. Happy Easter to all of you. Before we start, um, I just want to share with you what is really the spirit of Easter. Show how great and his heart and compassion is. I was talking with Phil Baba by email a few days ago, organizing this talk. And then he sent me one offering. He said, if you want, I can be your translator. Is it translator? Yes. I can translate your funny English to the real English. See how he is thinking in all of you how much love and compassion he has to all of you. But to avoid too much work for him, I humbly decline. So I hope you all will survive. Before we start, let us please close our eyes. Let us remember our breath the bread of love, the bread of Christ, the bread of peace. And so let us take our heart and minds today to Lord Jesus, the symbol of love and compassion and peace. and pray for him that we may be able to understand what this day is really meant to be. And pray for him that may bless each one of us to really feel his presence, his presence, his resurrection in all of us, in our hearts, in every day of our lives. Easter should not be just once a year, but should be celebrated in every breath. Sahana Babatu, Sahano Bunaktu, Savidyam Karabahu. Tejasvi Navaditamastu Mavitrishavahi Om Shanti 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 I really feel blessed to be here with all of you on this really special day. Honestly speaking, I do not feel worthy of talking on this day of resurrection of Jesus, but I will share whatever is coming from my heart. The life of great beings is not made just by talks or teachings, but mainly for his way of living, his example. Gurudev always used to say that example is better than precepts. And if we think about our Jesus, his ministry was a little bit more than two years. And beautifully he preaches and he teaches us how to love, how to live, how to serve. But in the last hours of his life, he did not say anything, almost anything. But in silence, he condensed all his teachings through his examples. The only thing he did in his last hours was pray. He prayed. So the idea is for us to analyze these last hours, these last days of his life here on earth. And how 
can that be applied in our own lives? We should not think of Easter and week of Easter only for these days once in a year. But the message of the masters is for us to change our lives, to experience the real transformation in us. And this is why Christ came to us. And this is why the masters are for us. Let us start with Friday, called Good Friday. Right after <clears throat> Jesus had his last supper with the disciples and offered love and the last teachings and blessings and forecast what was going to happen, he went to pray in the dense night, in the dense night, dark night. And there, after prayer, he was betrayed, he was arrested, and all his disciples abandoned him. Then during the whole night, he was tortured, humiliated, we cannot even imagine what he passed for us. He was taken to one priest. And from this priest, he was taken to the high priest of the temple of that time, called Caiaphas. And that priest had the ability to, if needed, to stop that soldiers with the torture and maybe to listen and to understand what was happening. But what he did, he just add more fuel in the anger of the soldiers and the people. He just create more chaos, more confusion, more suffering and humiliation to Jesus. And Jesus in silence. Without being able to decide what to do or not being willing to decide, this high priest decided to take Jesus to the governor to Pilatus. So Jesus, in this immense torture and humiliation and pain and suffering was taken to Pilatus. And then this governor who could decide anything, he could decide to free Jesus, he could decide for anything. And he realized that Jesus was not the guilt of anything. He understood. And then he asked the people, why do you want to crucify this man? I cannot see anything wrong in him. People were extremely raged and say, we want him to be sacrificed this Easter. And he tried again, but I cannot see anything wrong in him. Doesn't matter. He should be crucified. And then under the pressure, and not being willing to maybe to be at risk with his reputation, what he did, he just say, I wash my hands. You take care of him. He was the leader. He was the commander to take the decision. And he washed his hands. That means he was agreeing with the crucifixion of Jesus. So Jesus was taken for more pain, for more torture, for more humiliation, to carry his cross and to be crucified without saying a single word of anger, resentment, offense, tolerating, digesting for all of us. But we all know this story. But what that means to our lives? How can we derive this moment to our lives without only being sad? Let us think a little bit. When Jesus came out from his last supper, it was <clears throat> a dense night. A night in our lives symbolizes ignorance. Jesus was surrounded by his disciples at evening time. But when came night, he was not more with them, his loving fellows, his children, 
He was with the soldiers who just want to torture and kill him. Who are the soldiers in our lives? And who are the disciples? Both can be the same, our sense organs. When we are in the day in our lives, that means knowledge, that means discrimination, and we use our sense organs in a disciplined way, in a loving way, we are close to Christ, our divine consciousness. But when we are in ignorance, in the darkness of the night, and we live in an unruled way, undisciplined way, just following our desires, ambitions, bad habits, and allowing our senses to enjoy without any discrimination, that is the soldiers that are torturing our Christ, our Jesus in us. If we look at Bhagavad Gita in 70th chapter, verse 6, God himself says, this ignorant people who doesn't know me, torturing their own bodies, they forget that they are torturing myself within them. See, there are some similarities. If we go to Chandi, the book of the Divine Mother, the devas were tortured and they were praying for the Divine Mother to save them. The master says that in every limb of our bodies, in every sense organ, there are the presence of the divine. And this presence is called in different names, doing different functions, but it's nothing but the presence of the divine, the Christ. So whenever we use these senses in a wrong way, we are torturing our Jesus within us, the divine soul. And not only that, after hours of torturing, he was taken to this high priest of the temple. His name was Caiaphas. He was ruling over all the soldiers and he could free Jesus from the grip of that soldiers. But what he did, he just add more fuel on it. He just create more chaos, more confusion, more pain to Jesus. If the soldiers in our lives symbolizes the sense organs unrolled, what can me, what can be mean the Caiaphas, that high priest in our temple? Remember that our bodies are the temple. And who is the king who rules the body, who rules? It's the mind. Like Dhrutarastra ruling his kingdom. And the mind is blind. The mind is also in darkness, like that priest. And the mind cannot decide anything. The mind creates more confusion in our lives, more chaos. And our soul, our Christ, inner Christ, is more tortured with a, such a mind, such a blind mind. And unable to decide anything, like our minds are. And full of confusion, what he did, he took Jesus to the governor, Pilatus. He was the top to decide. He could free, he could decide anything. But what he did, he knew what was right to do. He had the power to decide for the right thing to do, but he just washed his hands. If we go thinking on this way, what could, mean, what could mean Pilatus in our lives? And that is our intellect. The intellect is the main instrument in our lives. It's the most powerful one who has the ability to decide what is right, what is wrong, and to make our lives beautiful or make our lives terrible. And what the intellect did, knowing what was right, and not deciding for the right thing. And that was the crucifixion of Jesus. So in our lives, don't we not crucificate also Jesus many times? How are 
the use of our senses in the world. How do we eat? How do we talk? How do we look? How do we speak? How do we listen? How do we touch? We should remember that Jesus is there. How do we behave with him within us? How is our minds? Any bad thoughts we have, it's like that uh, crown of thorns in the head of Jesus. Any negative thoughts, any unbalanced emotion in us is also torturing. Are our minds pure with good thoughts, concentrated, balanced, happy, or no? And let us look at our intellects. How is our decision-making factor? Are our every decision clear, right, and taking us to a good path, bringing us good results? Or our decisions many times create trouble for us and for others and create chaos in our lives and others? And more and more wrong decisions we do in our lives, more and more we are crucifying Christ. That means we are getting far and far from our divine nature, our divine consciousness. So this is Friday. And this is Friday in our lives, the torture of Christ and in us. Let us go to Saturday. And let us think about the disciples. After a day before of chaos, fear, confusion, they now could breathe a little bit and just think what happened. And can we imagine their feelings, their pain of separation, their feeling of resentment? We abandon our master. Peter, the head of the disciples, denied him three times, the repentance, the thinking of how is our lives going to be from now onwards. And thinking also in the greatness of the master who were with them a few hours before. It's truly a painful day, a mournful day. Can we bring that also for our lives? What that Saturday means for us? And that is a day of a moment in our lives that we need. It's a moment for seclusion, silence, self-analysis, to think about our minds, our behaviors, our moving in the spiritual path, it's essential, the moments of silence, self-analysis, reflection. Do we have this or not? Sometimes, like the disciples may have feel during this day, this kind of seclusion and now self-analysis, observing our minds, our thoughts, our behaviors, of course, is not always sweet. Many times we will perceive bitterness and pain but it's essential. Otherwise, it's much, much probably that we will go astray from our path. We have to know where we are and where to walk, how to walk, how to proceed. And this is self-analysis. This is self-study, study of scriptures, reflection. How is our thinking? Do you know how is your mind? Do you know how is your walking towards your goal? Do you know what is your goal? Is it your goal clear in your front? Do you know what is good in your life? What is not so good in your life in order to remove and in order to strengthen your good qualities? This is self-analysis. Do you know how to improve the next day? Do you know how to walk faster? This is what seclusion and self-analysis and this day of silence that is symbolized by Saturday in the life of Jesus. It was a waiting day. 
for the disciples was a long waiting. We have to wait also. And during this wait, we have to look within and to observe with strength, with force, with an unbiased mind. Not easy, but it's needed. So our steps, what Jesus showed us that we have to follow these steps to feel the resurrection. And if we go a little further on Sunday, what happened in Sunday? Normally, from all of these days, Sunday is the most beautiful day. It's the day of celebration, day of joy. He's back. Whatever he promised to all of us, he realized, he showed on Sunday, Easter Sunday. Can you imagine the change of perception of the feelings of the disciples from two days of mourning, suffering, crying, pain. Now they are again with their Lord and they had the experience. He cannot die. He is forever. Their fear completely disappeared. They are immersed in love. Doesn't matter what they had to do at that day on, they would feel the presence of Christ. They would feel the love of Christ and nothing could remove that from their hearts. Is it not really a truly and beautiful day? The day of resurrection of Christ, but not only Christ, in every one of his apostles. From that day on, on they start to heal people they start to rise dead. They start to preach in the name of Jesus. Just representing Jesus. Speaking. Jesus was speaking through them. And what that day means for us in our lives. The special point of this day is love. We have to bring love in our lives. We have to struggle, to live with love. It's an effort in the beginning to talk with love, to think with love, to behave with love, to sleep with love. This is an initial struggle, but then after some time, this will come an experience in us. And then it's not more a struggle, but it's a natural feeling in us emanate in love. So love is the way and love is the goal. And Easter Sunday, at least for me, represents love in us. How we have to improve, implement, and to struggle initially to develop love until we will be completely connected to this divine love, immersed in this divine love. And then it's not an effort anymore. It's the perception of the Christ in us, this union. And then our fears, our worries, our negativities, all our garbage will be burned into ashes. Love is the main thing in life. And Sunday is the symbol of love. So Friday in our lives symbolizes the effort, the struggle, we have to do to control our senses, our mind, our intellect. It's a sacrifice in our lives. We have to sacrifice our wrong desires, our negativities, our bad habits. And this effort to control our senses, to control our minds, to control our intellects, to avoid the crucifixion of Christ in us, it's called in Sanskrit, tapaha. Tapas. This is meditation. This is discipline. This is a right living. This is Friday. Friday is tapas in our lives. It's a sacrifice. Connecting to that, if we go to Saturday, this way of waiting, this way of reflecting, this way of sometimes repenting, correcting, looking forward, looking to our goals, analyzing, removing, in our lives is our self-analysis and it is called 
Swadhyaya. Who I am? What I'm doing? Do I know my goal? Do I know why I'm living? Do I know what is good and bad? Do I know how to remove all this? Do I know how to improve? And do I know how to reach the goal? Swadhyaya. Start of scriptures also is including this part. So the second day is another essential part in our lives, Swadhyaya. And the third day, the day of love. Our spiritual path, our spiritual practice is like a machine. Our meditation, our prayers, our discipline, our self-analysis is like a machine. We have to move. We have to struggle. And what is love in this working machine? Love is the lubricant in that machine. If we go on on our spiritual path only with discipline, only analyzing ourselves and seeing the mistakes, seeing what to improve, what not to improve, our lives are prone to become dry and our spiritual path can be bored and we can get dismotivated. But when we include this lubricant in our machines, when we include our love in our spiritual path, in our spiritual life, and in our life in general, that can allow us to move more smoothly and with more joy, lightly on the spiritual path. Can we do that? Can we use these special days that Jesus brought to us to improve our lives in these aspects, to bring a little bit more of discipline in our lives, to meditate a little more, to look more within us, not only seeing the faults and defects and negativities in others, but developing the ability to look at our mistakes, our errors, and with that grow stronger and confident, and especially because we are on Sunday, to cultivate, to bring, and to try to spread more love in all of our actions, all of our relationships with people, with ourselves, and with God and the masters. It's an invitation for us. And if we think a little bit, as Guruji always says, these three days celebrated now during these moments are the integration of three edges. Hands on Friday, disciplining our lives, energy, willpower, strength. The second edge is head, not only disciplining, but using our intellect, discrimination, how to change, how to move, how to proceed. It's not only the strength to move, but to know where to move and how to move. And the last edge, and for me, it's the most important, heart. We have to add love in everything we do, in every step in our spiritual path, in every step in our regular life. They are integrated. We have to bring love. And if we think a little bit, we may have heard many times these three concepts in Sanskrit are called Tapaha, Swadhyaya, and Nishwara Pranidhanani. So we know very well what are these three integrated, and they are called Kriya Yoga. Let us think a little bit. Are we not extremely fortunate to have one too? one path in our lives, in our hands, that are completely aligned with the teachings, with the life examples of Christ, are also we not extremely fortunate that not we are only aligned with the Christ, but we have one entire lineage of Christ-like masters guiding us in every step, Conducting, discipline us, the children. So 
we may perceive the resurrection of Christ in this life. And we may be able to celebrate Easter in every breath till our last breath. We have not to wait till next year to say Happy Easter, but to have to put our thought, our brain, and our hearts in action to experience this resurrection every day. And like the disciple, like the apostles, to be connected with this Christ in us, with this presence of Jesus the whole time, without interruption. interruption. And this is what we should aim for our lives. It is possible, it is in our hands. As Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is in your hands. And also the king, kingdom of heaven is within you. We have to experience that. We have the desire. We have the path. We have the masters to guide and protect us. What more do we need? Let us use these days to bring more motivation, inspiration, love in our lives and to really put our fort, our whole being to transform and to experience the resurrection. We should not be content only with the stories of Jesus. We should not only believe, but we have to experience. This is what I would, wanted to share with all of you in this beautiful day, that our hearts are more tender, our minds are more calmly and more thoughtful of Christ. Let us use this day to be the day of transformation, the first day of our renewal, of our strength, our love, our devotion, and our intellect, right? I thank you all for this beautiful opportunity. And I thank you all for this opportunity to think more about Jesus, to think more about the masters, and at least to feel a little bit more this divine love. But the best things now, we should try to experience a little bit. Let us meditate together on this special and powerful day. Please close your eyes. Watch in your breath. Remember the presence of Christ in your breath and in your heart. Please listen a devotional song. Como são belos os pés do mensageiro que anuncia a paz. Como são belos os pés do mensageiro que anuncia o Senhor, Ele vive, Ele reina, Ele é Deus e Senhor, Ele vive, aleluia, Ele reina. Ele é Deus e Senhor, o meu Senhor chegou com toda a glória, vivo Ele está, Ele está, vem junto a nós. Teu corpo santo a nos tocar, 
e vivo eu sei. Ele está, ele vive, ele reina, ele é Deus, Deus e Senhor. Ele vive. Ele reina, Ele é Deus e Senhor. How beautiful are the feet of the messenger who announces the peace. How beautiful are the feet of the messenger who announces the coming of the Lord. He is alive. He reigns. He is God and our Lord. Don't forget your bread. It is the bread of love. It is the bread of Christ. He is back. He is alive. He is in us and everywhere. O oh, my beloved Christ, O oh, Prince of Peace, please reveal thyself to us. You promised to all of us that where there will be two or more gathered in my name, I will be there. We are here, O oh Lord, celebrating your presence. Please reveal thyself in your heart, in our hearts and minds. Love. It is the strength in life. Inhale slow, long and deep. Hold your breath and bend your body. Exhale. Normal and conscious breath. He is here. Let us bow our heads with love and devotion and humility at the feet of the Lord. He resurrected in our hearts. Feel it. Every breath is a prayer for him. Come, O oh Lord. Come, O oh Lord, into my life. Is the by this temple and transform it in the temple of love your divine love. Don't forget your bread. Don't forget your love. Don't forget Christ. He is here. Pray from your heart. Open yourself. He just wants to listen to you. Inhale slow, long and deep. Hold your breath and slowly sit up. Exhale. Normal and conscious breath. Oh Lord, oh Lord, you are here. In the silence, he reveals to us.
Inhale slow, long, and deep with love. Oh Lord. Exhale slow, long, and deep and spread love. Oh Lord. Inhale slow, long, and deep and bring more love within. Exhale, slow, long, and deep. Spread this love everywhere. <clears throat> Inhale. Oh, God. Exhale, slow, long, and deep. Oh, Lord. Inhale, slow, long, and deep. Peace. Exhale, slow, long and deep, more peace. Inhale, you are love. Exhale, slow, long and deep, you are peace. Inhaling slow, long and deep with love. Hold your breath. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Normal and conscious breath. Please go. Take your attention inside the head. And experience the resurrection of Christ. Let us meditate in silence for a few moments with joy, with gratitude. Do not care for your thoughts. Just concentrate on Jesus within you. normal and conscious breath. But please keep your eyes closed. Keep your mind within. On this blessed and holy day, I'm praying to God, to Lord Jesus, and our masters to bless our lives with more love, with more strength, with more energy to move forward. Praying so we may have more faith in our lives. 
and we may be able to explore our divine and infinite identity. We are one with Christ. We are one with God. And we were born just to experience that. We have the path. We have the guides. We have just to move. Let this Easter be the Easter of transformation. And let every day of our lives be a celebration of the resurrection of the divinity in us, in every breath. And trying to perceive the presence of Christ in all of you and everywhere, I bow with all of you with gratitude and happiness. Om. Amen. Thank you all. And happy Easter or Feliz Pascua. Jai Guru.